Hello dreamers, how are you doing? All of those guys willing to immigrate to Canada in this year, this video would be very interesting for you as I would tell you the cost of applying Canadian PR in this year of 2020. In this video, we would talk about money that you would spend in different stages of your application. Even a small amount of money like courier charges would be counted as well. Also, there's a big sum of money that you need to show as proof of funds. I will talk about that as well. So if you're a single applicant or want to immigrate with your spouse or even if you have a kid, I will tell you the total amount of money needed in all such cases. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hello everyone, I am Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and I regularly upload Canadian immigration and lifestyle videos. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click the subscribe button and don't forget to press that bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. Okay. I've divided the complete process of applying the Canadian PR through the Express Entry system into six simple steps. The first step is your education assessment. There are a couple of uh, bodies or organizations through which you can get that done and WES is one of them. The second step is your language proficiency test. You can appear for IELTS, CELPIP or maybe a French language test. The third step is creating your Express Entry profile. You have to give a lot of information to the Canadian government by creating your profile. The fourth step is actually collecting the documents. So we would talk about the amount of money that you would spend uh, in doing the medical examination and getting the police certificates, etc. The fifth step is submitting your visa application. So you need to give some amount of money or pay the fees to the Canadian government while you're submitting the visa application. The sixth step is your visa stamping. So you need to pay some amount of money at the VFS centers and after that I would also tell you about the proof of funds, the amount of money that you need to have in your bank accounts as savings and towards the last I would tell you the total amount of money that you would end up spending in the complete process of applying the Canadian PR. Okay so let's start with the first step which is education assessment. So your education assessment or your education credential validation can be done through a couple of regulatory bodies and WES or World Education Services is one of them. Now, I would be talking only about WES in this video because most of the people actually prefer WES over the others as it takes the shortest amount of time to get your education assessment done. Okay, so this is the official website of World Education Services or WES. Here, if you scroll down on this web page, you'll find the fee is 220 Canadian dollars and that is for one degree. If you have more than one degree, then you have to pay more and uh, you don't have to pay the tax and there's a standard fee of $10 for the standard delivery. Most people choose this delivery option. So in total, the fee for WES would be 230 Canadian dollars. Okay, so now we know that the WES fee for a single applicant would be around $230. The courier fee would be around $30. Now it does depend that where you're sending this courier from. If you're sending it from different parts of the world, it might differ a bit. Also, you would need to spend some amount of money in getting the transcript and uh, getting that transcript delivered so you need to pay a small amount of money in your universities as well and that also might differ but it won't differ much I've mentioned it as $40 so overall you would be spending $300 in total if you apply through WES so if you're a single applicant you would be spending 300 Canadian dollars in the education assessment and then if you're applying with your spouse then in that case, you need to get the education assessment done for your spouse as well. So basically, you would be spending around $600 in the step one of education assessment. Now, if you have a kid who's uh, below a certain age, then you won't need a credential assessment for your kid. So basically, it would be for a primary applicant and the spouse. Okay, now moving on to the second step, which is the language test. Now, you can appear for IELTS, you can go for CELPIP, you can go for... Uh, French language test as well but in this video we would talk about uh, IELTS. Okay so this is the official page of IELTS Canada. We see the fee here is uh, 320 Canadian dollars but if we go to IELTS India we see that the fee is uh, 13 250 which is approximately 250 Canadian dollars so the IELTS fee actually differs from one country to the other. Same is with CELPIP. Uh, if we go onto the CELPIP website we see the fee is around 11,000 rupees but if you go to the other countries the fee might differ. Now if you're a single applicant then in the first attempt you would pay around 250 Canadian dollars 
you might be very good in english but still most of the times i've seen that people have to give the second attempt because they do get 6.5 bands uh, in uh, one of the sections so in that case if you tend to give the second attempt then 250 dollars more which would cost you around 500 dollars in total for ielts similarly if you have a spouse as well then uh, the primary applicant would end up spending around 500 dollars but in most of the cases if the spouse actually scores lesser then it's not a problem so even if your spouse gives the first attempt then it would be something around 750 dollars now again i would repeat the same thing that it would differ from one case to the other if you are getting good bands in the first attempt itself you would save 250 bucks but if you're not able to clear aisles or get good bands your desirable bands in the second attempt even then you need to spend $250 more and subsequently $250 for every other attempt. Okay, now let's moving on to the third step which is creating your express entry profile. Thankfully, this step is free of cost. You don't have to pay a single penny. Just have to go to the official website of Government of Canada and create your profile over there. Now, before we move on to the fourth step, it is very important that you get your ITA. Now, if your score is really good, right now it's around 470, 474. So if your score is above that, you would get the ITA and then you can directly move on to this step four. But yes, if your score is not good, you might need to go through the PNP program and you might need to pay the PNP fees as well. The PNP fee differs from one province to the other. For some province, it's 300. For some other province, it's 800. For some other province, it's 1500. So I won't count that case because it does differ from one province to the other. But I, instead, I would talk about the federal invite if your score is really good, you're able to clear the CRS cutoff, then you would get the ITA. So you move on to the fourth step, which is you're arranging your documents. Now there are many documents that you need to submit, but basically you would end up spending only for two documents. The first one is the police clearance certificate and the second one is the medical examination fee. Now obviously the cost of getting the police clearance certificate and medical examination differs from one country to the other. Let's say if you're in India, in that case you need to spend around $10 which is around 500 rupees for a police clearance certificate while you might have to spend something between 100 to 200 canadian dollars for your medical examination so i've mentioned it as 150 canadian dollars so overall if you're a single applicant then you would end up spending around 160 canadian dollars similarly if you're a couple if you're actually applying with your spouse in that case you would need to spend a similar amount for your spouse as well so it would double up and it would be 320 dollars now, if you have a kid, then you don't need a police clearance certificate, but yes, still you do need the medical examination for the kid as well. So in that case, you would end up spending $150 for the kid as well. So the total would be something around $470 for the complete family. Okay, so now let's talk about the fifth step, which is submitting your application. So once you have got everything ready, you have your documents with you as well. So now finally you have to pay a certain amount of fee to the Canadian government to process your application. So that fee is uh, 1040 Canadian dollars. So if you're a single applicant, you would spend 1040 Canadian dollars. If you're applying with your spouse as well, in that case, you would end up spending double the amount, which is uh, 2080 Canadian dollars. If you're applying with your spouse and a kid, in that case, you need to spend $150 for the kid and uh, 1040 for the spouse. So the total would be 2230 for the complete family so that is the amount that you would end up spending in the fifth step okay so now let's talk about the last step which is the visa stamping so once you've got the ppr or the golden mail then you're supposed to go to the visa office submit your passport to get your passport stamped for the canadian visa now even this fee might differ from one country to the other in a country like india you would spend something around 20 canadian dollars for a single applicant and obviously it would be double if you're applying with your spouse and it would be triple if you're actually applying uh, with a child so if you're a family of three you would end up spending around 60 canadian dollars for the sixth step okay so now let's talk about the proof of funds so you need to have a certain amount of money in your account and you need to prove that to the canadian government that you have that amount of money to survive in the initial days of landing in canada and this list has just been updated on the 1st of january 2020 so if you're a single applicant you would need around 13,000 canadian dollars if you are a family of two people that means you're applying with your spouse in that case, you would need around $16,135 to be exact. If you are a family of three people, in that case, you would need something around $20,000 Canadian dollars and so on. Okay, now the moment of truth, the grand total. So if you're a single applicant, you would probably spend something like uh, this amount 
in each step of your PR process. So total expenses at the end of the process would be 2020 Canadian dollars. Wow, what a number, exactly the same as the year. And you should have a savings of around 13,000 Canadian dollars. Now you might be watching this video from different parts of the world. You can convert it as per the foreign exchange rate of your home country's currency. I know that I've got a lot of Indian viewers, so I've converted this amount in INR as per the current forex rates and the total would come up to what I've mentioned here. If you're applying with your spouse, then obviously you would be spending almost the double amount and the total would come up to be slightly lesser than double the amount of a single applicant. So the total expenses would be something like 3,800 Canadian dollars and the savings would be 16,135 Canadian dollars. Okay, if you're a family of three, in that case, you would actually be spending something like this in each step. So the total expenses would come up to be something like 4,100 Canadian dollars and the savings that you need to have is close to 20,000 Canadian dollars. So these are the grand totals of three different cases. If you have two kids in that case, there would be a little more expenses and you need to have more savings. But before I end this video, I want to be very specific in respect to the assumptions that I've made. During this video, you might appear for a language test in different parts of the world. The prices differ from one country to the other. And also you might be able to clear that test in one or maybe more than two attempts. So the total would differ accordingly. Apart from that, I haven't counted any fee for the immigration lawyer for the different consultancies or maybe if you want to go for any IELTS coaching. Also, if you have lived in other countries for more than six months, then you need to pay for the police clearance certificates of those countries as well. So that would all be additional. Then I now hope that through this video, you would have an idea of the overall expense and the savings that you need to have with you before starting the process. And that was all the information that I wanted to convey through this video. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you want to see more these kind of videos, then please subscribe my channel if you haven't done that yet. And yes, please put your comment down below for the feedback of this video and let me know if you like the video by clicking that thumbs up button. Thanks again for watching this video.